Thank you for joining us today for our youth webinar in our Back to School series. I'm Kyle Dine, Youth Program Coordinator for Food Allergy Canada, and today we will be discussing what it's like going to elementary school, middle school, and high school with food allergy with members of our youth advisory panel. But before we get started, I wanted to note a few items. Number one, please note that this presentation is for informational purposes only and will not provide specific medical advice, recommendations, diagnosis, or treatment. Please talk to your doctor about any concerns or questions you might have regarding your own health and your child's health. Number two, all participants are muted so we can keep the audio clear for this whole webinar. Number three, if you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them in the chat question box throughout the webinar and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. And number four, lastly, this webinar will be recorded and shared on foodallergycanada.ca afterwards in case you want to refer back to it or share it with others. But before we get started, I'd like to start off with a poll question today to see kind of where we're at with this topic of back to school. So it is how comfortable are you feeling about back to school with food allergy this fall? Very comfortable, comfortable, somewhat comfortable or not comfortable. Let's see where we're at. And let's see where we all land on this. All right, so how comfortable are we going back to school with a food allergy this fall? 18% very comfortable, 45% comfortable, 27% somewhat, and 9% not very comfortable. Well, today that's what we're really gonna try to do is get you to that next level of comfort and try to get any unknowns cleared up. Uh, it's been a, a different year this last year and uh, it's, it's a definitely a new, new fall with new things to, to be aware of. So we're gonna cover that today. So thank you for doing that poll. Now, a little bit about myself. My name is Kyle Dine, and I've worked with Food Allergy Canada for quite a while as their youth program coordinator. And for me, it's, it is it is personal because I have food allergies myself. I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, egg, fish, shellfish, and mustard. And I've been to school with these allergies myself. Here's my old, my old grad photo. So uh, elementary school, there's a high school where I had some really awesome uh, gel in my hair there, and then uh, getting, getting a university degree as well. But uh, through all those stages, food allergy was top of my mind in making sure I was safe. So this is an issue that's near and dear to my heart, but I'm really excited to, uh, to talk with the real stars of the show. And I'll, uh, I'll put their photos up here. And today we are going to be speaking with Ben, with Lucille, Olivia, and Zina. And they are a range of ages all the way from age 8 to 14. So right from elementary school into high school, which is really, really neat to get that many perspectives on food allergy. I'm going to introduce them in a couple minutes. But to set the stage, I'm going to talk about really the goal of what we want to get across today. And that is giving you useful tips, whether you are a parent, or whether you're youth joining us today, everybody is welcome to, to try to pick up something new uh, from this webinar, because we really wanna give you useful tips on transitioning, um, you know, that step up to middle school or you're stepping up to high school. What are the things that you should be thinking of? Not day one of school, but a little bit in advance so that you're ready and you're prepared. And why that's so important, on the next slide, I'm gonna say, really, it's, it's everything is new. And, and that's why we need to be prepared because you're going to be going into a new, new classroom, perhaps a new school with um, different class rules. You know, is there eating in the classroom allowed? Um, what, what's allowed, what's not? What about sharing? When are hands washed? Where do you wash your hands? There's a lot of new things to be aware of. Uh, you have a new teacher who you need to make aware of your food allergies. How do you do that? When do you do it? New friends, right? And I'm sure we're very excited to see our, our, our friends this fall, but you know, what, how do we talk to them? How do we let them know? And our panel, they have some really, really great tips of how to, how to get that information across and you know, in a cool way. And obviously it could be a new environment altogether where you're just not sure um, on day one where you're eating and you know, what that looks like. So I think the most important thing, as I, as I say, say on the next slide, is that it is important to be ready for all of it and be ready for those new experiences and to think through it before it happens. Um, and maybe it's thinking through your school trip that's happening in October or thinking through what lunchtime looks like and where you're going to be keeping your auto injector with you. 
Uh, is that going to always be in your book bag? Or are you going to have a spot in your cubby or locker? Do you have an emergency plan that's been updated? Maybe your parents have new cell phone numbers that need to, to go on there, or your medicine has, has changed from one device to another. It's important this time of year to take a look, take stock of what you have and, and, and change it. Um, and then, you know, with meeting new friends, new people, don't keep it to yourself. And I know that it's, it can be very tough to, um, to put it out there, but the more people that do know about it, the more support you have. And lastly, practice your spiel. And what I mean by that, you know, for me, I go to a restaurant, I've got my regular lines that I say, and even with friends, I have my regular things that I say to make sure that they get it, that the message is taken seriously, uh, and I'm, I'm not putting them off by it either. So, you know, it's finding the way that you, is, you're comfortable with and explaining your allergies to other. So I'd like to now introduce the panel. Very excited for, for you to meet them. They're an incredible, group of, of young adults here and youth and I'm going to ask them to um, I'm going to ask them to turn on their webcams at this point so we can see them as well I'll turn on my webcam as well and we'll go through the introductions of everybody so hey everybody and if our panel they can turn on their webcams too all right great to see everybody so thank you all for joining us this is fantastic I think this is our first youth webinar where we've had such a range of, of, of youth, which is fantastic. So maybe we'll just go across the panel here and I'm gonna ask you to just share your name, your allergies, and then maybe something very unique about you, like a hobby or something that you love to do. So Zaina, do you wanna start us off? My name is Zaina. I'm allergic to tree nuts and I like to make friends at school. Awesome. And are you really looking forward to going back? Yes, I am. I love it. Uh, Olivia, go ahead. Hi, my name is Olivia. I'm allergic to peanuts and tree nuts, and I like to act in the school play. Excellent drama. All right, Ben, or sorry, Lucille, go ahead. Hi, my name is Lucille. Um, I'm anaphylactic to peanuts, tree nuts, and soy, and I just love to read all sorts of things. So did you get some reading done this summer? Yes. Fantastic. And Ben, go ahead. My name is Ben, and I really and I'm allergic to milk, eggs, peanuts, peas, chickpeas, and green peas, and I really enjoy doing photography. Photography, excellent. Well, it's it's great to have you all. I know Zaina's going into grade four, which is awesome. Olivia, grade seven. Lucille's going into grade eight, and Ben is going into grade. 11. So what a great range uh, for all of you. And Food Allergy Canada, we're doing a campaign right now called What's in Your Backpack? Where we're just trying to get people to think of you know, what, what's going in your backpack day one of school. And maybe we'll just go along the same, same order here. Um, what's going in your backpack this fall in terms of uh, how you're going to be prepared for school? Zaina? I have my lunch bag and I have applesauce, some apple juice, crackers, marshmallows, and marshmallows. I, I have water in my backpack, a notebook, a pencil case, and my EpiPen. Awesome. You're prepared. A lot of safe snacks in there, plus your auto injector. I love that. All right, Olivia, what, what about yours? Um, I have. Well, my water, um, safe snacks, my Abby pen and inhaler, and I also have this really cool cutlery kit where it has a cap on it, so it's all completely clean and didn't touch anything. That is so smart. Great. Uh, Lucille, what about you? Um, for me, I'm bringing a lot of the same things, but I'm also bringing an EpiPen trainer to teach people how to use it. Fantastic idea. And for people that aren't aware of those, trainers are like practice EpiPens. You can get them for Allerject or Emirate as well. And you can go right to the, those companies' websites and, and order one. Very great for practicing. Thank you. All right, Ben, what's in your backpack? Um, just um, regular like binders, pencil cases, as well as um, a water, a few snacks that are packaged. So that way it's very easy to eat. And um, I'll keep my EpiPens in a separate bag as well as water in my backpack. Excellent. Well, thanks for sharing that, everybody. Some real good insight there. And we're going to start into our first topic. But our first topic that we're going to dive into is really lunch and eating at school, snack time. Um, and we'll go around the panel here with a question. So 
when it is time to eat at school, are there any tricky situations? What are things that you have to be looking out for? Go ahead, Olivia. <laughs> Um, I would say tricky situations would be like holiday celebrations, um, people when they bring snacks for their birthdays, and overnight school trips. Yeah, those special situations, I guess, eh? that they're not your everyday routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious. So for all of your, your school setups, do you, where do you eat? Is it in a lunchroom? Is it in your classroom? What's, what's the normal eating spot? Um, I eat in my classroom. Well, I'm in a portable, so. Okay, you know about your portable. Lucille, what about you? For me, a tricky situation would be like people having food with my allergens in it, obviously, but then like the cross contamination, so like a peanut butter sandwich and then touching stuff like equipment that I could touch. So. Absolutely. It's a lot to think about too. Um, and that's why it's, it's so great that you have your own safe things that you're really making sure your food is okay. Uh, ben, wh wh where do you eat in high school? I remember high school was a little bit loosey-goosey. Uh, what is it like at your high school? Um, there's a couple of um, spots. There's often a lot of people eating, for example, like in the hallways. I can also eat in a classroom with um, people um, hard of, they're hard of hearing um, because of the program I'm in. And you can mind eating over, you can mind being in rooms like you're getting extra help. It's very, there's lots of options with high school. That's great to know. But there can be food in a lot of places. Excellent. Olivia, what about at your school? Um, we just eat in our classrooms. Student classrooms. Okay. Wow, what a mix. Um, and then, so for, I'll do one more question about uh, eating at school. So do you bring your own food? How do you make sure that the food is safe for you? Does anybody, does anybody buy food at school? Or um, what do you do? Zaina, go ahead. I, I bring my food from home. Um, when I'm buying from the store, we check the ingredients. And yeah, so we can't really do anything else because we can't really ask if it has uh, anything. So we just check the ingredients. Yeah. And I don't really need to ask my parents if it has my allergens because they always know if it has my allergens or not. Oh, that's awesome. You have very safe food coming in and then that goes away. They, right. they make sure to keep the main contained away from me, like the ones that might have nuts or the ones that have nuts away from me, like on top of our fridge where I can't reach. Uh huh. good strategy. Put it right out of reach. And I love that because, yeah, anything that has those precautionary labels or they're typically not safe for people with food allergies. So it's really important that yeah, we're not getting into that. Um, what about what about you, Lucille? Um, I bring my own and I keep it separate from everyone else's. And if it has no ingredients, I don't eat it. Excellent. Ben, Olivia, anything to add? I'm pretty much the same as Lucille. I keep all of it like in my locker, in my bag. I bring my own stuff from home. Yeah. But if I get something from school, I'll just read the ingredients over three times. If okay. I know what it is. Like there's vending machines in my school. So I haven't ordered anything yet, but if I did, I'd read the ingredients three times. So do you get things from the vending machine? Um, I haven't yet. Okay. So that's definitely new territory. Like I'm sure that wasn't in every elementary school. But it's that's a tricky situation, right? Because it's behind the glass and all you want to do is grab it and read it. <laughs> so yeah, playing it safe with that. Olivia, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, not really. I buy my own food. I not buy it. I I bring it. Um, and then we just read it over a lot. Nice. Well, hey, I'm sure we're going to be circling back on eating at school throughout our questions today. But we're going to go into the next topic, which um, our teachers, people that we, we value so much, and for, for a lot of us, we haven't seen in person for a while. So I'm sure you're excited to, to get back in the classroom, see a teacher face-to-face uh, -face again. And I guess the, my first question is, do your teachers know about your food allergy? I'm, and I'm talking about all of your teachers. So I know like for Ben, you might go class to class to class in high school. Um, do all the people that teach you know about your food allergies? Yes. Uh, yes Go ahead, Ben. You can start off, and then we'll go to Zaina. Um, yes, because in the beginning of the school year, 
have right here a form similar to this will be passed around to all my teachers, which is details like my allergies, picture of me, and like other medical conditions that I have. Fantastic. So you have them all in writing. You have that on the, for the rest of the year. Oh, uh, yes. I will also just ask all my teachers to have, like any questions just in case anything were to happen. Excellent. Zaina? Um, my teachers do know about my allergies. Yeah. Fantastic. Olivia? Um, yeah, my teachers know we um have emergency plans um in the staff room, um, in the office, and it's also in the supply teacher binder. And um at the beginning of every school year, I have a my mom and I, we have a meeting with the teacher talking about what makes me feel safe and just about my allergies. I love that. It's such a great time to do it, start of the year, uh, make it known. But I also love your little tip there um, about supply teachers. Because yes, teachers are not there absolutely every day. Sometimes they, they have to take the day off or they're sick. And to have that information going to the next person is really, really important. I love that uh, you, your parents have made sure that's, that's part of your plan. That's great. Lucille, I know that you have a different situation with school, correct? That you are, correct me if I'm wrong, homeschooled, right? Yes, I am. So I'm assuming your teachers know really well about your food allergies. They do. I tell my dance teachers, like, I don't have, like, a school teacher. My mom's my school teacher. Yeah. But, like, I tell my dance teachers and bring the trainer and share videos and stuff to teach them how. So. That's great. So I think, you know, for people that aren't so familiar with homeschooling, all well, this year we, we are, um, you know, you do have those peripheral te teachers teaching you other things. And that's fantastic that you train them, uh, your dance teacher, on how to use your, your epinephrine. So fantastic. So a really cool perspective to have. Um, and then my other question is, has your teacher ever really helped you out with your food allergy? Have they ever done something that made you really feel like they get it, they, they support you? Any examples of that where you just felt really uh, good? I have an example. Yeah. So, it, so um, when it's Christmas, my teachers give me like presents, like something to eat sometimes, like chocolate. We check if the chocolate has my allergen. So when I eat it, I don't have a reaction. Oh, wow. That's great. So she, your teacher really gets it and, and does some double, triple checking on anything they give out to you. Oh, that must make you feel really great. Anybody else have, have an example? Yeah, um, so my, the teachers, they always just make sure everyone there has brings something that's good and they remind people of the no nuts policy at my school. But I just remembered one time that, um, so my teacher, she gave everyone these chocolate bars that, um, and then she like put this weird thing on it. So it looks like a reindeer um for christmas and i can have them because well i couldn't so then um the next day she brought me a christmas light and she made it look like a reindeer with um pipe cleaners and pom-poms and stuff so that just made me feel very special that's wonderful they went out of their way to just make something to make you included too i love that Ben or Lucille, do you have anything at the top of mind? If not, it's okay too. <laughs> um, yes, I do. Um, my teachers will often communicate like to other students. But my allergies, like at the beginning of my grade nine year, one of my classes, one of my teachers told everyone about my allergies, considering my often eaten. And luckily, all the students were really good. All my classmates. That's so There's great. also like warning in the classrooms like about my allergies, which is really helpful. It's great when they do that and it sets the tone for everybody. So it's, it's, it's known. Love that. Cool. Well, we appreciate teachers so much. Um, I hope that it's all a great transition for everyone going back and teachers, if you're looking for more resources, we have a lot on foodallergycanada.ca emergency plans and ways to make a safe classroom. So we have lots there. Um, so let's go into the people that you probably miss the most, friends, right? <laughs> Who's excited to see some friends at school this fall? Exactly, right? So let's talk about that a little bit. 
Um, and I think one of the questions we got in our advanced questions from all the registrants, how do you tell your friends? How do you do that? And a lot were kind of wondering, how do you do it while um, obviously getting the right info to friends, but without making it scary for them, trying to you know be yourself and tell them about your allergies? How do you do that? Um, when I'm going to one of my friend's house, so my parents tell their parents, and I tell them that I'm allergic to nuts, and I tell them what I can't eat. So then they don't get scared, they're just okay with, they're, they're okay and they know I can't eat nuts. I love that. Um, and, and especially that you tell what things those can be. Yeah, so if I'm eating Huh? I, think, I think for some people they just hear nuts and they just think maybe the, the nut that they like but there's lots of different nuts and nuts are in all lots of different things and if you give some examples like you do uh, it makes it a little bit easier for them to, to picture what those restrictions are yeah, I, I told them I tell them that I'm allergic to tree nuts so they know I can't eat those they give me like other things like pizza or something they give me things about nuts so. awesome it's worth it to speak up. But I only have to tell them once because once they know, they don't really, their parents don't really forget. But if they forget, their parents don't know. That's it. Hey, that's really great that you, you tell both parents and kids. Fantastic. And whenever I go to their house, I'm just going to give them my epithet. Like, here we go. Oh, you're fantastic. That's great. Uh, Lucille, how do, you, how do you tell someone new about your food allergies? I tell them and their parents, like, right away like as soon as I meet them really and my sister and I did a science fair project about allergies and cross-contamination a few years ago so it's like to just help bring awareness to it and stuff wow what a great way to to reach more people and especially so I gotta ask you what what did you do in your science experiment how did you actually make people understand cross-contamination well, we did like mixed coconut oil and glitter together and then you pretended like it was nut butter or peanut butter and put it on our hands and did different ways of cleaning hands to show which one actually cleaned like it off. The glitter was the protein in the peanut butter or whatever. So like it showed that like hand sanitizer doesn't get the protein off and it could still be there. I hope you got first prize because that sounds fantastic. <laughs> It's one of those things that I bet people will remember their whole life though. I remember I did this experiment one time and now I know I really have to wash my hands with soap and water. So kudos to you, that really made a difference. And I love that you tell people about your allergies first thing, just get it out of the way with and then it's, it's known. Ben, what about you? What's, what's your, your plan of, of educating others about your allergies? Um, I used to do it like a, get, like a get to know you environment. So it's a very, it's not like super strict, I guess. Like often I'll just tell my friends and all my friends have been really, really nice about it. So kind of when it comes also, up. Yeah. I, I've also taught, taught like a few of my friends how to use that and for like going out to a mall or something. Just to make sure in case something happened, they knew what to do. Yeah, excellent. Just when, when it's kind of relevant in your situation. Excellent. Um, and then, so you tell your friends about your allergies, and most of you tell them pretty, pretty close to right away. And how do they help you? Why is it worth it telling your friends? Um, once I tell my friends, they make sure they're pretty safe. So then they will, like, let, for lunches, they make sure they bring safe stuff and they wash their hands all the time and they just make it be like a bit of a more safer environment. Awesome. Do, do, do others agree? Yes. Just give us more, more support knowing that people get it. Excellent. Is there anything that you wish your friends would do more of? Or are they pretty spot on right now making you feel supported and comfortable? I can say for me, there's some friends I have still. I wish they, they were got it even more i think some get the surface of it but they've never really tried to learn more than more than that so i would love to have my friends be a little bit more proactive and almost asking me hey i haven't you haven't taught me to use the trainer in a few years can you remind me 
uh, versus me always trying to remember who's who have I trained. So it'd be great for for that for them to be proactive sometimes. It sounds like you have some great support. Great. Well, I'm going to do a, a poll question, another poll question about friends before we get on to the next topic. And it is for everybody watching, uh, do you tell all of your friends about your food allergy? And if you're a parent, you know, try to answer on behalf of your kid. Uh, if you're a kid, answer it the way you would. Yes or no, sometimes. And let's see the results. Oh, I'm giving you all a big round of applause. That's awesome. So 72% said yes, you always tell your friends about your food allergy. 3% no, and 25% sometimes. Okay, fantastic. And maybe that's just based on different situations. You know, you tell friends where it's on a team or something where there's not maybe possibly uh, food around. But very good idea. You're telling the people around you, the ones that can really help support you. All right, thank you. Now, the next topic is, is related to friends, but sometimes friends, acquaintances, classmates treat us ways that we don't necessarily want to be treated. And unfortunately, we hear a lot of Food Allergy Canada about food allergy related bullying. And that is a topic that is not cool at all in my books for not only just bullying, but teasing or unwanted attention about your food allergies. Has anybody ever had any of that? Not necessarily bullying, but just, you know, maybe it's comments or things about your allergies that you're just like, ugh. Um, when I was younger, a few people in my class um, just kept on teasing me and just pretending that they had something and just like wondering why I didn't have any, eat any of it and just were being just rude. Um, so then I ended up telling my mom and my teacher we did a restorative circle so and then it stopped. It's a restorative circle? Um, it's one then um, you come together as a group and kind of just talk about the problem and figure out ways to fix it um, just I calmly. It. So. That's such a great idea because it's not one person saying don't do this but everyone realizing the issue and the solution. Very cool, restorative circle. You've taught me something very cool today. Has anybody else had an, uh, an experience where they got unwanted negative attention because of their food allergy? Um, I haven't had any from like my friends or my peers, but I was doing, my sister and I were doing a science class and the, like the teacher absolutely refused to support my allergy so we had to like change the emergency plan but and we talked to like the helpers who were helping with the class and they were thankfully pretty good about it but yeah oh how'd that make you feel not too good yeah that'd be a bit frustrating you know especially when you have it's one thing when kids do it, but when you have an adult that uh, is is not treating your allergies the way you want them to be treated, that's really frustrating. But yeah. I think the most important thing is is to know yourself and be grounded in in what your knowledge of how to stay safe and what's a what's a no, what's what's okay, uh, and not not wavering on that. So good for you for advocating for yourself. They're tough situations. Does anybody else have any any to share with bullying, negative attention with their allergy? It's all good. And I know I've had a few when I was growing up, which was a long time ago when people didn't get food allergies as much. Um, and for me, it was always trying to remind myself at the end of the day, they don't know what they're talking about. And I need to stay strong with my allergies and always just do, do my regular thing, carry my medicine and uh, check ingredients. But if it ever does get really serious, obviously it's really important to speak up as you did Lucille, tell someone about it and get help for those situations because there is help available to anyone who's getting bullied about a food allergy or even just getting negative uh, attention. And maybe you can do, if it's very, very great classroom environment, a restorative circle as Olivia taught us about today. That's fantastic. Uh, but we're going to get into carrying epinephrine. And this, this, I'll start off with an easy question here. We got this a whole bunch from people registering. Where do you keep it? Where do you keep these devices with you when you're at school? Um, I have um, the one I have one on me at all times is in a running belt so when like during gym class I don't have to take it off and it doesn't jiggle 
So that is good. Um, and then I have one in my backpack and then also another one in the school office. Excellent. You were covered on you, around you, and in the facility. That's fantastic. The, the running belts are, are really cool. They really hold it snug, right? Excellent. Zaina, where do you keep yours? I keep mine around my waist during school. Excellent. So it's right there with you. You're going into grade four, and that's fantastic that you've got it right there with you at all times. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the other end of the spectrum. Ben, in high school, where do you keep yours? I might actually recently switch where I keep my food. You should keep it in like a pouch like this. But I recently started putting it in a pouch like this, so I can also carry a water bottle, house keys, and my puffer in the same pouch. Nice. The essentials all in, all in the pouch. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Lucille, what about you? Where's yours? Usually around my waist, and then I have like my inhaler and my spare EpiPen in like a backpack or a purse. Oh, excellent. And so, you know, you're, you're mentioning different places that you might keep it. What's everyone's tip, top tip for making sure you don't forget it? Sometimes we're moving it from bag to bag to bag. Do you have any type of tip or strategy to help people not forget their, their epinephrine? I have a strategy. Yeah. Um, so if you have a backpack or a purse, then put your, you can put your epinephrine in there. So if you ever need to go somewhere to school or some, or someone's house, you can, you're bringing your epinephrine or purse, you're, you're, you're bringing your backpack or purse. So then you have your epinephrine in there in case you forget it, or you can just put it by your front door and then, so you can grab it and then you can, go. Uh -huh. Put it on your track <laughs> where you know you're going to be passing by. I love that. Okay. Olivia, do you have one? Um, so I put it in this one spot right by the door. So after a while, I completely know where it is and like, it's just tap it now, just getting it from there. And also if it's by the door, if you're on the way out, you see it, if you're about to forget it. Um, it also is actually good to have in one spot if you ever are having a reaction at home. So then you know where it is right away. Absolutely. The consistent spot where you, you know, you can count on it. Lucille or Ben, do you have any tip to make sure you always have it? Um, for me, I always keep my um, pouch in the spot where I keep my like my phone and my watch. That way, I know I have to like do a checklist. So I know if I'm forgetting one thing, I'm likely forgetting the other things. That's great. Yeah, if you're, if you're counting on your phone to be with you, then this has got to go with it. Like you paired them up. That's that's thinking. <laughs> cool, Lucille. What about you? Um, yeah, I keep it by the door in this, in a backpack. So that's like the backpack we grab in an emergency. It comes with us when we like go out or yeah, it's right by the door. Excellent. Uh, I love that you all have strategy that, you know, we've, we've been doing this for years and years now, and you probably just have such a good system of second nature of where you keep it. It's consistent, you know, and, um, and you always have it with you. Fantastic. So let's do another poll question for the audience right now about uh, carrying epinephrine. So where do you keep your epinephrine when you're at school? Backpack, desk, your coat area or cubby or other, and perhaps it's a combination of all of these, like some of our panelists, but what would be the one guaranteed spot you'd have it? Wow, 50% in your backpack and then 50% other. So we'd love to hear what those are in, your, in the question box. Maybe it's like a fanny pack or some other type of purse or thing, carrying device, but uh, we'd love to hear that. Cool. Well, it's great that so many of you are carrying it. And I can see in the questions already, some people are saying purse, which is great. Cool. I'm just going to do a little review of the symptoms of anaphylaxis, just so we're all aware. It's been a while probably since we went through this, but with back to school coming, it's important. So a little review, the signs of anaphylaxis, you have skin, where it could be the hives, swelling um, around your face, itching, warmth, redness. But it's not just skin, it can be respiratory too, or it affects your breathing. And you can see all of these symptoms here, where you can have trouble breathing, shortness of breath, whatnot. 
gastrointestinal, so stomach, where you might be getting stomach cramps, nauseous, vomiting. Um, also cardiovascular, where you might just be feeling really pale, or feeling really um, weak or pale or dizzy, lightheaded. And then other, where you might have anxiety or a sense of impending doom. So um, take a good look here. There's, there's all of these symptoms that are really important to remember. And I think for anybody who is at risk of anaphylaxis, the most important thing is anytime you feel any of these, you speak up. Um, whether you're at school or home, if you're at school, you're telling your teacher, uh, grown up right away to get help and, um, and get into the emergency treatment, which the next slide I will cover conveniently. So if you ever are having an emergency, whether at home, away, or at school, step one is give epinephrine at first sign of uh, a suspected anaphylactic reaction. That is number one step. Then step two is calling 911. After you've injected, get help coming to you. Let them know that someone is having an anaphylactic reaction. Now, after the, you have help coming to you, step three, give a second dose if needed. Uh, if there's no improvement in the symptoms. And that's why it's so important to always have two doses with you. Step four, get to the hospital where they can make sure that you are okay, that the reaction is stopped and, uh, and monitored there. And then step five is call emergency contacts, let others know where you are, what's happening, um, so everyone's aware. So it's a good review at this, at this stage of the summer before we go back to school, but um, it should be on your emergency plan, not only the symptoms, but the treatment plan. And we have those emergency plans on foodallergycanada.ca. So you can download it, fill it in, and then print it, give, give it to teachers. Absolutely. So we will get into close calls now where I'll ask the panel, uh, have you ever had any close calls with your food allergy at school? And let's start off with Ben this time. Ben, have you had any close calls at all? Um, the closest call I've had was that I was in grade three or four. I used to have these, um, there was these cardboard boxes in the video school, like, um, binders, like, um, binders and folders, and it had fallen onto my face, and I'd had a bunch of hives in my face, well, my lips started to swell, and so what I did was I had gone, washed my face, and my mom was called to the school. Great, so action was taken immediately after that, excellent. Zaina, have you had any close calls at school? I've never really, I never had any close calls at school, not even in general. Excellent. I hope you never do. You got a good track record. <laughs> Olivia? Um, I had this once. Um, so the at the playground at school, there were actually peanut shells on it. So my friends found them. They told the teacher and told me to not go there and they cleaned them all up and went to the bathroom and washed their hands, but they made sure they didn't touch anything until after they washed their hands twice. I love that. That's, that's great that they did that. Good for everybody to be so aware of the situation. Lucille, have you had any close calls? Awesome. Yeah. For me, it was at a dance recital. It, we were hanging out in the dressing room back, my sister and my two friends, just waiting for our turn to go on. And this girl started eating these peanut butter filled pretzels and she said she was just gonna eat the salt off of them, but she wouldn't put them away. I didn't wanna go too close to the allergens. My sister and my friends stood up for me. They went and told her, you put those away and she wouldn't listen. So we went and got like an adult and she made her put them away and wash her hands and rinse out her mouth. And I was okay. And has, has there been any issues since then? Not really, I haven't really had a recital since then anyway, so. Well, it's awesome that you did the right thing there. You know, you, you do what you can using your own voice and sometimes if your voice isn't enough, you get somebody else's that, um, that they'll listen to. So good for you, you really handled that like a pro. Fantastic. Um, well, I'm glad that there hasn't been too many close calls with all of you. Um, on the next slide, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, allergic reactions, getting help in emergencies. And not necessarily at school, but has anybody had an allergic reaction before? And how did you know what it, it was an allergic reaction? Then how did you treat it? Um, I've had a reaction, but not at school. Like in general, it was actually the one where I actually figured out I have allergy, and it was my first one I, I ever. 
I've never had any since then. So what happened is basically, um, so I was in the car. My sister had an appointment for like for asthma, I think. And then, so my, so me and my dad were waiting in the car because my sister and my mom were went inside the building. And then I got a little hungry. I asked my dad for some food. He gave me chocolates. But we didn't know I had allergies. So like I, he thought that I didn't, wouldn't have a reaction because he didn't know if I had allergies or not. He gave it to me. And then um, I ate it by myself. I did. I was hungry, so I had to eat it. I ate it, and then um, later, um, I I started having symptoms, and then my parents thought I was having a reaction, and then so they took me. They were take. They drove me to the hospital. They um. They my mom gave me medicine before we got there. Um, it would help me. Yeah, I was all better after the medicine. She gave me my medicine, but then they gave me the the, the shot at at the hospital. <laughs> and the also funny thing that happened there was that they said I could leave, and then after they said I had to stay, right after we called my dad and my sister to come back and pick me up. <laughs> oh really? Well, you gotta play it safe and make sure that you're you're one hundred percent okay, right? But yeah, you know, and then I got my. My um, dad and sister got me something to eat also. And <laughs> then I w fell asleep later. I woke up in my house. Oh, wow. What a, what a whole experience. But, you know, that first reaction, you know, that's a toughie because if, especially if you don't know you have food allergies, it's a real surprise and you might not be prepared to, to deal with it. So it sounds like your parents are very quick on their feet and got you to the hospital. Yeah, to my sister also has allergies to nuts, but she just also has allergies for I only have to nuts. Okay. Wow. Well, thanks, Diane. I'm glad everything turned out okay. Does anybody else have a story uh, of a reaction that they'd be comfortable sharing? Um, I've had two reactions um, throughout my life. The first one was when we figured it out. I accidentally ate chocolate-covered peanuts when I was three, and then we were close by a hospital, thankfully, so then we just went there, and it was good. But then the second one, I think I was around five or six, um, so we were at Walmart, and um, I touched the car and then touched my lip. Um, so nothing happened until later. My dad, I had these cookies. Um, they were safe, of course, except I touched that same spot on my lip with it and then ate it, and it was just cross-contamination. Wow. So I, I, I was that sensitive. Yeah. And so we were actually, the hospital was like uh, on the same street. So okay. that was good. At least that. <laughs> but it really goes to show, yeah, how, how cross-contamination is real and how diligent you have to be with washing hands and just staying clean. And, you know, it's a, sometimes you're not around a sink. <laughs> so it's, it can be really hard when you're shopping. That's, yeah. Yeah, after that, for like five years, um, I had to wear gloves whenever we went shopping so that it wouldn't happen again. Sure. Yeah, that would be, a, a, yeah, you don't forget an experience like that. Lucille or Ben, did you want to share anything? Um, My most recent. Oh, sorry, you go. Um, for me, we were at like a little function thing that with my parents, my sister and I, and the person who was in charge of it offered my sister and I a cookie, and we asked three times if they were safe and had no nuts, and he said three times that they were okay. And all it took is a little bite of the chocolate chip cookie, which was peanut butter chocolate chip cookie. And yeah, so my lips started swelling and my mom knew what it was and epied me. And then we went to the hospital. I wound up having a secondary reaction, but and a reaction to the medicine that like the IV or whatever it was, medicine that they gave me. And but the nurses were really good and I was OK. Great, good to hear. That's, those are frustrating reactions when you've done everything right, you've asked, you've triple checked, and what sometimes you get the wrong information from the wrong person. So that's really too bad. And Ben, did you have a story you wanted to share too? Um, for me, it was a while ago, and I found out I was loaded to check these. I'd eaten a donut that was thought to be safe, but at the time, I, I wasn't aware I was loaded to check these. Okay. So I had a reaction. Yeah. But I went to, I got a EpiPen at the hospital, so it was you know, good. Uh, to, to chickpea, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of those lately about chickpea allergies. 
Um, let's do another poll question just with our audience right now regarding getting help in emergencies. We'll launch another poll here. So for anybody watching today, have you or your child ever had an allergic reaction at school? Yes, no, or not sure? And let's see the results. So the majority no, 70% have not had allergic reaction at school. 22% have, wow. 9% not sure what it, what it was, but there was definitely something going on. All right, thank you for doing, for doing that poll. But for the final tip, I like to ask our panel. So I've got a daughter who's five years old. She's going into grade one. She's really, really small, a little bit nervous about school. Uh, what's your advice to anyone, whether they're entering elementary, middle school, or high school, um, this fall, with a food allergy, what advice would you give to them? Your top tip. Lucille, I'll start with you. Um, mine would be to just tell people and to don't be afraid or nervous to advocate for yourself or others and just ask for help if you need it. Like if someone's bullying you or you think you might be having a reaction, just ask for help and tell people. Great tip. Olivia? Um, I think it's smart to talk to your teacher about your allergies before the school year starts. So at this meeting, you can talk about your emergency plan and what you think will make you feel safer um, because school is better if it's a safer environment for you and it just makes the whole entire year go easier and it just starts off on a really good foot. Yeah, great tip too. Zaina? Um, my tip would be if someone teases you or bullies you um, because of your allergies, just don't ignore them because what they say is not true. They just, they just think they, they don't know how serious their allergies are. So don't listen to what they say. You're, you're just as normal as it is. That's really smart. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, it's important that you uh, tell a teacher, but set them straight, get the right info, but don't just let it go to excellent. Ben, go ahead. My tip would be if ever your class is going, for example, like off to like a field trip or something, or something that's like out of the ordinary, pack like your EpiPen bag the night before and have a checklist before you leave the door so it's one less thing to worry about. Yeah, that's a really good tip. The day of the trip is usually a scramble. So do the really important work the day before. I love that tip. Good one. So we'll get into audience questions now. I want to give all of you a round of applause. Thank you for being so fantastic during all those questions, but we're gonna do a couple more from, from parents. So let's see, it's, we've had a couple come in advance. Parents, kids, whoever's here, you can submit questions in the question box. But I'm just gonna ask a couple while we're waiting for ones in the questions here uh, that we got in advance. So one, one was, do kids with allergies struggle with friendships at school? Have allergies ever been a, a, you know, an issue in making friends for you? No, it just just go go find someone if they like want to play with you or something. They just you can play with them, and then when you start trying to make friends with them, then maybe you can just start to tell them that uh, that you have allergies and then listen to how they respond and then if they respond like very nicely then probably you that'll be very easy to make friends with them i never had a situation that i couldn't make friends that good i've made friends a lot of friends in my in the past years in school i love that that's great to hear anybody else I don't think having allergy changes how you can make friendships. It might make it harder to go to a friend's house, but you can, you don't have to eat anything there and you can wash your hands. I don't, I just, if you have an allergy, it doesn't mean that you can't have friends. It, you can, it's just completely normal. You yep. just can't eat the certain thing. Great point. Don't keep it a secret, tell them it will make your friendship all much more stronger and if they're not doing something like they're not understanding they're still doing stuff even though they know you have an allergy tell them tell their parents something like that great point yeah in this day and age a lot of people have food allergies and it's pretty normal to know no friends with food allergies it's not something to 
to be a deal breaker on any friendship. So I'm glad that you guys all agree. All right. We have already compliments coming in to our panel through the questions saying that you all did an awesome job today and that you're fantastic. So fully agree. Uh, let's do maybe one or two more questions here uh, that we'll, we'll squeeze in. So someone asked again, how do, where do you carry um, multiple um, auto injectors, EpiPens, Allergex, Emory, um, let's say you have two or more in a discreet way, somewhere where you've got them, but maybe it's not too visible to everybody around you. Ben, you, you've got kind of a, a strategy with that, it sounds like. Um, for me, I have a pair of two EpiPens in the, in the office at my school. When I was in elementary school, I had a pair of EpiPens in a civic room where like most, I had most of my classes. That's not really applicable anymore in high school. Gotcha. And, I'll, and I'll also have a little box like with a puffer and an EpiPen that a teacher will have also on my field trip. Just in case something were to go wrong with the one I have in my bag, in my empty bag. Excellent. Any other tips of carrying them in a way that they're with you, but maybe it's more discreet? Um, I actually have two EpiPens. One, when I'm going to, so at the beginning of the year, my, my, when I just started school, so my mom gave one of my EpiPens to like, um, so I got my allergy in grade two. So my mom gave my EpiPen to my, one of my EpiPens to my, to the office. And then the other one stayed with me around my waist, as I said before. Oh, excellent. It's always good. Olivia? I would say if it's like a formal event or something, just have it in a nice little purse. It's not that noticeable on it, but, and I normally carry it around my waist, but sometimes I like just carrying it in a little bag. So, but, so it can be easier just to have it around your waist though. Excellent. All good tips. Well, we are getting, close to the end of our session today. And I just want to say face to face to our panel, thank you all so much. You were fantastic. You gave so much insight, hope, inspiration, all of it to everybody joining and watching today. So thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. And I hope that uh, the four of you have a wonderful back to school, safe and, and, and great back to school season ahead. So thanks again, I really appreciate it. So we'll turn off our web cameras now and we're gonna wrap up today's webinar uh, just with a few, few extra little tidbits here where I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the other helpful info that we have with Food Allergy Canada because we have a lot of really, really great stuff. So we have the Allergy Pals program which provides online mentorship for youth ages seven to 14. If you're looking for more information, go to foodallergycanada.ca under youth. We have the registration, everything there. And it pairs up kids with food allergies with big kids and goes through all of these really important topics in a fun group setting. Very, very helpful. Uh, food Allergy Canada, we have some upcoming events, um, webinars and events. So as a continuation of this webinar, I'll be chatting with um, YAP members on, on our Instagram, Instagram Live next week, August 18th and 25th, where you can ask more questions about going back to school live. We also have a webinar coming up for parents on August 24th. That is with leading UK psychologist, Dr. Rebecca Knibb. And she'll be discussing how to support the transition to self-management of food allergy, how to really take it on and gain a better understanding of the mental health aspects that youth may experience on the path to independence and learn practical st strategies on how to successfully manage these transitions. So don't miss out, register for that one at foodallergycanada.ca. And I'm gonna do one more poll question before we fully wrap it up today, just to see where we're at now. So we asked this at the beginning, but now that it's kind of fresh, all of these topics, we've talked a little bit more about them. How comfortable are you feeling about back to school with food allergy this fall? All right, let's see the results where we all land on this. So 38% now, very comfortable. That's a great increase, 33% comfortable. It's 19% somewhat and 10% not comfortable. Uh, I know it's a big gap this year. I know it's a big jump, uh, especially with the last year, the way it was. And um, for more information on, I know a lot of people are, are wondering about the implications of COVID and all of, all of these new issues we're dealing with. We have other great 
resources available on our website and webinars that talk a lot about this. So please go to foodallergycanada.ca back to school slash back to school for more information and to help our comfort level get uh, up another notch. And feel free to get in touch with us directly too. Uh, we love to hear from our community and help directly. So don't be a stranger. And lastly, we'd like to thank our sponsors for this webinar series, Chapman's and Odo's. We really appreciate their support. You'll get a short survey after through GoToWebinar immediately after that will pop up on your screen. You'll receive the survey in an email also in the next hour. And we ask that you take a few moments to complete it. Your feedback is really crucial in helping us improve our future webinars and to also better understand what additional questions or comments you may have. A recording of this webinar will soon also be available. Thank you so much for coming to this webinar today. Thank you again to our wonderful panel. We hope you found it very informative and helpful. And here's more information that you can get on our websites. This now concludes the webinar.